Today, we will show you how to install a force trolling motor. For this installation, we recommend having at least two people. In addition to the force trolling motor, you will need a drill with a 5 16 inch drill bit, a number 1 and number 2 Phillips screwdriver, a 3 mm and two 4 mm or 5 32nd inch hex bits or wrenches, a 14 mm socket, and a torque wrench. The force trolling motor kit will have six labeled bags A through F. Bag A contains parts for mounting the motor to the boat deck. Bag B contains parts for securing the steering system to the lower half of the mount. Bag C contains parts for securing the upper and lower gas springs. Bag D contains parts for securing the steering system to the upper half of the mount. Bag E contains parts for the pull cable handle. Bag F contains parts for securing the cables to the mount. When assembling the motor, you must use non-power tools to install all of the parts, observing the torque specifications when provided. Using power tools to assemble the motor may damage the components and void the warranty. The first thing you will want to do is to select a mounting location. The motor must be mounted on the bow of the boat. It is recommended to be mounted on the port side of the boat with the deployed motor as close to the center of the boat as possible. First, we will mount the trolling motor to the boat deck. We will use parts from bag A for this section. Taking out the motor base, pivot the top parts of the mount up and back to access the mounting holes. Using the base as a template, mark the mounting hole locations. Remove the mount base from the boat deck and drill the pilot holes with a 5 16 inch drill bit. You must remove the base to drill the mounting holes. Place the safety strap under the mount base near the center with the hook and loop fasteners facing forward. Keep the ring close to the motor base so that it doesn't flap around when not in use. Make sure to put down the strap before mounting the base as it will not be possible to install with the motor base bolted down. Place the base mount on the deck aligning the mounting holes. Secure the mount to the deck using the included bolts, washers, and brass locking nuts. Brass nuts are used to lessen the risk of galling. Tighten the nuts to 8 foot-pounds. Now it is time to install the steering system on the mount. We will use parts from bag A for this section. Pivot the lower half of the mount forward until it locks into the base. Push the safety rods into the mount as far as possible. From the inside out, insert the bushings into the lower holes on the steering system housing. Do not alter these bushings in any way. There are two sets of bushings that are included with your force trolling motor. Make sure to use the set from the bag marked B. Keeping the pole cable up, place the steering system housing onto the lower half of the mount, aligning the lower holes on the housing with the holes on the mount. Push the pivot pin through the housing and mount to hold it in place. It is important that you do not hit the pin with a hammer or any other object. Also, do not drill or modify the holes. This pin will fit in when pushed by hand if aligned properly. Damaging this pin can void the warranty. Finally, route the pole cable up through the steering system housing. Next, we will secure the upper gas spring. For this section, we will use parts from bag C. Start by pushing the safety rod toward the steering system housing as far as possible. This is what locks the lower pin into place. Align the single hole on the base of the gas spring with the safety rod and press down. The screw holes on the base should align with the holes on the bottom of the mount. Install the screws now. 
From the outside in, insert the bushings in the upper holes on the steering system housing. These will be the second set of bushings that you'll use. Pivot the top of the mount forward. You may need to swing the top of the motor away from the boat to bring the motor down. Make sure to not swing the propeller into the boat or trailer as it can damage the motor. Push the top of the steering system housing inward, aligning the holes on the mount and housing. Push the pin through the holes on the top of the mount and the steering system housing. Do not hit the pin with a hammer or any other object. Do not drill or modify the holes. This pin will fit in when pushed by hand if aligned properly. Damaging this pin can void the warranty. Using the two 4mm or 5 32nd inch hex bits or wrenches, secure the pin using the screws and washers on both sides. Route the cable from the steering system housing to the display panel on the top of the mount. Push the connector onto the port on the display panel and rotate the locking ring clockwise to secure it. This connector is key to fit into the port only one way and will easily fit when aligned correctly. Do not force this connector onto the port as it can bend pins and damage it. Now we will install the handle on the pull cable. For this section, we will use parts from bag E. Insert the cable through the hole in the bottom half of the handle. Insert the pull cable through the washer. Push the R-pin through the hole on the end of the pull cable. Pull the cable down so that the washer and R-pin rest in the bottom half of the handle. The R-pin will only fit in the handle one direction. Using a number one Phillips screwdriver, secure the top of the handle to the bottom using the screws. We will now show you how to route the power and transducer cables. For this section, we will be using parts from bag F. To avoid damaging the power and transducer cables when deploying and stowing, Along with avoiding interference, you must route the cables through the right side of the mount. There are only mounting points on the right side of the mount with the motor pointing forward. First on the power cable, measure 16 inches from where the cable connects to the steering system housing. Mark this point on the cable for later. With the motor in the deployed position, Wrap the transducer cable through the channel along the right side of the mount. Route the power cable through the channel above the transducer cable. Leaving a rounded bend in the cables, take the cable where it is marked at 16 inches and hold it to the side of the mount where the screw holes for a cable bracket are. Using a 3mm hex bit or wrench, secure the bracket to the mount using two screws. Hold the cable against the bottom of the mount where they exit the channel. Place the other bracket that has two screw holes over the cables and against the mount. Secure the bracket with a 3mm hex bit or wrench using two screws. Hold the cables against the plastic portion of the mount base close to the boat deck. Insert the lower tab on the remaining bracket into a slot below the cables. Using a number one Phillips screwdriver, secure the upper tab of the bracket to the mount base using a single screw. Install additional plastic cable clips to secure the transducer cable to the power cable if and where needed. 
two plastic cable clips are included in the parts bag. Now it is time to secure the lower gas spring. For this section, we will use the remaining parts from bag C. Align the hole on the base of the lower gas spring with the safety rod and press down. You may need to lift up the mount and flip over the gas spring if it was positioned on the other side of the mount during the previous installation steps. Using a number two Phillips screwdriver, secure the base of the lower gas spring to the mount using the included screws. Now install the propeller. The parts for this section will be included in the box with the propeller and does not have a label. Insert the pin through the propeller motor shaft. If necessary, rotate the motor shaft to orient the pin horizontally so it is less likely to fall out. Align the channel on the inside of the propeller with the pin and slide the propeller onto the motor shaft. Place the anode, washer, lock washer, and nut on the end of the motor shaft. Using a 9 16 socket, tighten the lock nut to 6 foot pounds to secure the propeller. Now we will be connecting the trolling motor to power. When making the wiring connections, observe the following considerations. You must connect the trolling motor to a 24 or 36 volt DC battery bank capable of supplying 60 amps continuously. You must connect the power source through a circuit breaker rated for a continuous 60 amps. This is not included, but can be purchased from our website. This is the part number. If you need to extend the power cable, reference the installation instructions for finding an appropriate wire gauge based on the length of the extension. If you do not know how to do so, please contact an installer. And that's it. You have successfully installed your force trolling motor. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit support.garmin.com.